Hi, I'm Dr. Giovanni Rondo, host of Healthy Mind, Body, and Spirit, where we're in season two of an exciting a time where we're talking about lots of different topics. Today we're talking about faith and the medical field. Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? That is probably my very favorite uh, Bible verse. Psalm 27, um, I read that almost on a daily basis when I was 27 years old. That was probably one of the hardest years of my life. That was my final year of medical school. I was dealing with a lot of different things going on, not only in medical school, but also personally. Um, I was watching uh, my father being hospitalized back and forth um, with numerous medical conditions, and he eventually passed away. There were so many different things going on, and it was very, very difficult. But I can truly say that the Word of God saved my life. In Psalms 23, and reciting that on a regular basis and going over it to the point where I knew it by heart, helped me. So on today's episode, we're talking about faith. We're talking about spirituality, and so we have a great uh, uh, co-host, I should say. Um, so introduce yourself and tell us about your journey in the medical field, Dr. Gaines. Uh, well, first of all, Dr. Rondo, thank you for having me on the program. It's a pleasure. And uh, I love this topic. Uh, I pray I can get through it without tearing up too much because it is a, a very uh, emotional topic for me. Um, it is, and I, I could just feel myself just welling up yeah. with tears just, just thinking, thinking about it yeah, yes just thinking about it yes. you know I had to get out my tissue so yes. but um, I'm right. I'm a physician by the grace of God um, I am from a wonderful family um, that we were raised in church we believe in God um, but my parents were not uh, college graduates in fact they were just high school graduates mm -hmm. but they taught me so much about hard work uh, get your homework study, 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 education, education, and uh, along the way, God put different people in my path that made um, going to medical school possible. Mm -hmm. And even when I doubted myself, I got a teacher certificate just in case I didn't get in, but I got in several schools, and it was mm -hmm. just by the grace of God. And, mm -hmm. and um, just one example is when I was in high school, my uh, bi biology teacher said, oh, you know, you're really good in science. You, you ought to go to Case Western. Wow. And I followed it up. I applied to Case Western, Ohio State. I got into Case Western, and it turns out to be one of the finest schools in the country yes. for pre-med and medicine. Yes. Uh, so I just, I say that by the grace of God, I had great parents. I had a wonderful supportive family all along. I mean, the number of times people gave me $5 here or mm -hmm. here's bus money to get to school or whatever. Um, and grandma being there after music lessons. I mean, it's just, I had a wonderful life. And I think, you know, I think about our um, immediately past, well, not immediate past, but President Obama. I believe God ordained him to be our first African-American president. And if you look at his whole history, how he was raised in, well, how he lived some time of his life in Indonesia mm -hmm. and couldn't even speak the language, that, that whole part of his life probably shaped a lot about how you communicate with people, uh, the importance of relationships, the importance of differences. Mm -hmm. And I just see that, and I, I believe that God sent me here to be a doctor. I really do. Uh, and I, I don't just say that, I believe that. Wow, wow. Yeah. So this is a kind of a different type of show because we normally talk about the body. We normally talk about physical ailments. Right. So this is something that's really different to talk about uh, things of the spirit, so and of faith, which you know, in terms of the scientific methods or, or whatnot, is is really different. It's just a different mentality, just overall. So, thank you for coming on, and we're going to have a very lively discussion about yes. you know some different things because you just really don't hear a lot of times physicians or doctors talking about their faith. Yeah. So we're going to talk about just those things. So, speaking of which, how do you, Dr. Gaines, define faith? And how do you define spirituality? 
And then religion. Um, religion is more of a practice to me. Okay. Faith is more of a, an emotional and a mindset. Uh, I believe in God and I respect everyone for their whatever they believe in. I believe in God and I know that every day I'm here to do, help him do his work. I, and I tell my patients all the time, I said, you know, I'm just helping God. You know, I, I don't think... You're a vessel for yeah, him. Yeah, I don't yeah. think I am, you know, more than anybody else, but I know that God sent me here to work with people. And, um, but back to your question, I'm sorry. Back to your question. To me, faith is um, what we feel. Spirituality is what I believe. And... Um, Religion is more of a practice because okay. different people practice it differently. Okay. But faith are internal things in my in my life. Uh, faith, belief, uh, my value system, and where it comes from, how is it grounded in my upbringing and in my um, spiritual practice. Okay. Okay. So how do you? So you did mention how sometimes you may speak with your patients or whatnot about yes. your faith journey. Do you feel comfortable actually doing that throughout your, you know, throughout your practice? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I've had several near-death experiences, wow. though I've never feared dying. And I tell people, people say, oh, it's good to see you. You know, I heard you were sick. And I'll say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll, I say, but I'm here by the grace of God. Mm. Um, so you've been on the flip side of things, yes. you know, because I think we as physicians, we're used to being on this side of the table and we give bad news or we, you know, talk about a certain diagnosis and we talk, talk about other issues. But you have a perspective of the other side of the table in terms of you being Absolutely. patient. So, OK, Absolutely. I mean, it, it to have been where I've been and never fear dying, that is just unimaginable. To most people, mm -hmm. it's very real for me. I've never had any fear, uh, though I've had many trials. Um, so, wow. but uh, I share with my patients all the time, and when they ask me, "Oh, it's good to see you," I say, "Oh, good, uh, thank you," uh, you know, and they'll say, "Oh, how are you doing?" I said, "I'm good, doing fine, by the grace of God." By the grace of God, yes. And I always tell people that. And the other practice, because I do deal mostly with children and their families, um, if I see a child have a um, combative moment with a parent, mm -hmm. I stop in my tracks. I don't even talk for like 30 seconds and I stare them directly in the eye. And I'll tell them, I'll say, I don't ever want to see that again. Mm -hmm. I said, because God only gave us 10 rules to live by. Mm -hmm. And this is regardless of what they practice. This is my communication to children. Mm -hmm. I said, God only gave us 10 rules. How important should those 10 rules be? And the first rule with a promise is to honor your mother and your father. Mm -hmm. So I don't ever want to see you disrespect your parents again. And that's, it doesn't happen that often, more often than I'd like, <laughs> but not that often. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I have to remind kids, even where parents, sometimes they don't recognize what they're allowing kids to do. And, you know, they'll keep talking or, or keep doing something. Say, no, the world has to stop because they need to hear this message. So you find that, that that's so important that you actually stop and you, you make that point. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. I'll stop in my tracks and, I'll, and you know, you give them a look. You know, that direct look, not mm -hmm. mean, just a direct look, and they, and they, they snap on Catch you. your attention. Yes. Catch that attention. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Well, that is a huge sign of just that you care. You care tremendously, and I think that's one of the things that, you know, we may be missing in our society because I see it a lot more now as opposed to when I was a child. I didn't, you didn't really hear or see people mouthing off or talking back, but it's like it's common now on TV in the new, it's just, it's much more common. I remember watching, I think it was the Osbournes, and that's the first time I'd ever heard mm -hmm. children curse their parents out. Oh, wow. You know, so, and that's, you know, the reality TV and all of that. So now it's a little bit more commonplace. So, but for you to, to take that time to, to you know, 
you know, kind of talk about some biblical principles, foundations. That, that That's just amazing. Right. And, you know, as, a, as physicians, we have to help people um, parent children. Because, mm -hmm. in the, like you said, in modern day, there are so many different images out there that can confuse children. Yes. And so, and sometimes parents don't realize it. You know, we're really not supposed to let kids be on these little um, devices mm -hmm. more than two hours a day. But sometimes you just see them there constantly. And you got to tell parents, listen, you need to talk. Mm -hmm. You need to have interaction with your children. Mm -hmm. They need to s settle down. They don't need all that stimulation all the time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think our job is sometimes medical. But sometimes it's just um, social. Yeah, just more of that hands-on, that, yes. that, you know, hearing and being right, right there. Yeah. It, is that because, I guess, th those devices control? You know, it, it's a sense of control. They can control their mind and control, you know, what goes into them, you know, just overall? Absolutely. I think that one thing that I fear is it can desensitize mm -hmm. children. Uh, especially to violence, mm. you know, yes. when uh, there's when you you know they're doing the little game show and they're killing things or shooting somebody, yeah. you know, that worries me because d do they incorporate that as more normal behavior right. uh, versus especially if we spend less time talking with them? Yes, and and is that teaching one of, them one of the you know, Ten Commandments is what? Do not kill. Yes. Yeah. They, uh, mm -hmm. Do not lie. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, the TV, uh, the TV between cable, uh, Netflix, streaming, and you, you can <laughs> see almost anything. Anything. Absolutely. You can almost see anything on TV right now. And does it, does it change how we perceive the world and how we behave? That's, mm -hmm. that's my concern. Mm -hmm. So how do you, like, okay, you've obviously as, as a Christian and, and reading, you know, the Word of God and, and reading the Bible, how do you interact or how do you deal with people who don't share your faith, maybe atheists or just of a different faith? How do you bridge that overall? Well, you know what? I don't try to convince people to do it like me, that they have the right to believe what they believe. It's not going to stop me from saying the same things I would say to a Christian or a Jewish person or a Muslim. It's not going to change me. But I find if you try to confront people and try to change their mind, you just, it's, it makes communication more difficult mm -hmm. and puts up more barriers. And so I try not to... Um, I try not to make people uncomfortable where they are. I can share where I am with mm -hmm. them and what I think about raising their children, uh, parenting, religion, mm -hmm. but eventually, at the end of the day, it's up to them. Right, right. And so I accept, I guess the bottom line is, can I accept other people for where they are? Where they are, yeah. And I, yeah. And I do, I try to. Right, right. So is there, you know, so we've talked about, you know, just in terms of your faith walk, but in terms of being a scientist, you know, being a scientist and then also being a, a woman of faith, sometimes it seems like that is kind of a difficult, um, those are difficult, or dichotomies. They're, they're, they're two different things kind of coming together or potentially not coming together. So, um, Not for me. Okay. Um, being a doctor is um, what God sent me here to do, and I can't separate my life. Yes, I studied medicine. I, I studied hard, as a matter of fact, and I try to do a very good job. Mm -hmm. But that my foundation is still in God. Mm -hmm. And so I, I really never had a problem. I will share with anybody my life story. Uh, when, I, when I came to uh, St. Stephen's, um, and this, is, this was a godsend, uh, that was, that's been right after Dr. Cosby started as a pastor, uh, because he baptized me. Oh, wow. And uh, I loved So you've been a member for, let's see, is it, can no, I say 40, 40 something years? Yeah, 40 years. Wow. And I was baptized when we, we still had, <laughs> we were in the small chapel, and um, there were about, oh, maybe 300 at every service, maybe 300 people. And I found that Sunday school was great for my kids. And so, and I was Methodist. 
and I'd been raised Methodist, so I was sprinkled or christened, <laughs> I guess they call it. Mm -hmm. um, so then when I joined St. Stephen's, formerly, I had to be, not had to be, I wanted to be baptized. Mm -hmm. Well, I just had back surgery. So Dr. Cosby forward uh, uh, dunked me in the water. Mm -hmm. And he Instead said, of going I'm, back. A, I'm a forward Baptist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, but you know, this has been um, my rock here. My, this church, my pastor, mm -hmm. all the people that in this church are so fabulous and so wonderful. Um, and they've been wonderful to me and my family. It's just been, um, there's no separation for me mm -hmm. from being a doctor and being a Christian. So it all goes and together. And a member yes. of St. Stephen's. No, they're, yes. all, they're all right on the same path. Yes. I can definitely say for, for my journey in and of itself, I remember um, I actually joined St. Stephen officially uh, when I was in medical school. Officially. Uh -huh. So um, that was a godsend, literally a godsend. And even though medical school was difficult, um, both being in medical school, but also taking care of my father. My father was very sick throughout my whole uh, journey in medical school. Literally, when I would come to church, I, I would very rarely miss a service, and I very rarely miss Bible, Wednesday night Bible study, even though we had a lot of studying to do outside. Yeah, right. um, I, I hardly ever missed, and it was just such a blessing. It, it right. really was a blessing to, to, to have you know, the experience of, of being a part of St. Stephen's during that time, and, right. and how even though I moved to another city and lived elsewhere, I lived in big New York City during my residency, I always referred back to St. Stephen. I never changed my membership. Church home. So yes. yeah, it was always my church home. So right. it, it's really been a blessing. I can definitely say that. But but you know, God is everywhere. You know, Christ is he, right. he covers us all over. And so no matter where I was, but there's just something that's really special about this the, this institution this in and of itself. So, this yes. place and our pastor. Absolutely. Uh, I'll have to say that it's been wonderful raising my kids here. Mm -hmm. And I think I hope more people will come back into the church when we're open again. Yeah. Um, because there's, there's, I love watching it on TV. You don't have to get up, take a bath, <laughs> get dressed. You can just be your realist yeah, you self, just, huh? Just, right, yeah. right. But, that we're realist. Um, what, it's nothing like um, coming here. And mm -hmm. in fact, uh, just today, uh, I used, uh, when we were in church, uh, there was a family, Dr. Eubanks family, and I would mm -hmm. go out mm -hmm. for, um, brunch after church and his daughter just happened to eat, uh, text me today and said you know I really miss our, our, mm -hmm, our breakfasts mm -hmm. and but it was always after church yes, you know yes and so that fellowship right afterwards yes, yes there's absolutely. nothing like the fellowship it's nothing like being in person you know we, we've I think you know we've learned a lot in terms of just that whole the virtual world yeah but there's nothing like that in person hands-on kind of you know, absolutely. Connection. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So speaking of which, how has this COVID-19, actually the pandemic in and of itself, affected your life, your practice, and then also your faith? Well, let's start with faith. Okay. Um, and that is what has brought us through the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, since actually, if, if you want to know, I was actually in Wuhan, China in October of 19. Really? Yes, and I came back the end of October. We were over there, well, we weren't in Wuhan only. It was a two-week trip in China, and... So, but you visited Wuhan, the, yeah. where the... Uh, no, I didn't go to that, I didn't go to that market okay. where they had the animals. <laughs> you no. wanna make that clear, No, huh? yeah, very clear. And, but we didn't even know about COVID at that time. Right. And so, you have to start with faith. Uh, God took me to China, and the whole story behind that is just different also. I was only going because somebody needed a roommate. And then that person wow. broke their leg the night before, their foot the night before. And so there I was, you know, in a group <laughs> of like 20 people, and, you know, sort of all by myself. But it was, it was wonderful. But coming back, and then the, the pandemic started, and at first, I think everybody panicked because there were so many deaths. And mm -hmm. my, one of my big interests has been how African Americans have had a different experience than white Americans. And that mm -hmm. is really, I think, more multifactorial than most of us want to admit. 
did we get the same care? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, why were we sicker? Yes. Why weren't we higher on the priority list yes. of getting vaccinations? You know, I, and that's where you have to have a belief in God that everything's mm -hmm. going to be okay. When you can see that the world doesn't feel really fair mm -hmm. and that maybe the, in your opinion, the best decisions were made, but we did get through it. Now, I think we're still in the aftermath, or we're still in the pandemic actually, mm -hmm. but the aftermath is that it brought out all the disparities yes. that, Afri that African Americans yes. especially experience. We're behind now in getting our physicals, you know, people didn't get their dental care, they had trouble accessing, um, you know, all kinds of services. Mm -hmm. And it has exacerbated mental health. A lot of people Absolutely. have experienced depression as a result of being so isolated. And anxiety. For a long time. Yes. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And anxiety. Oh, you know? and anxiety. Yes. Exactly. Uh, how did I spend my days? <laughs> you know what? It's almost like a blur because I couldn't. Uh, I'm a three time cancer survivor, so I really was not going to tempt fate. Um, so I really was isolated. And how did I spend those days? Some days I don't even know. I mean, you just get through the day and you watched a lot of t lot more TV, you know. Uh, I didn't. Would you say by the grace of God? By the grace of those God. Days, and, yeah. yeah, and I didn't learn the computer any more than I did before. I've always shunned away from you know technology for some reason. Um, but you know the 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 COVID the COVID pandemic has taught us a lot of things, and. I'm hoping now that as people are not getting vaccinations as often as they were and having more reasons not to get vaccinated, I'm just praying to God that African Americans and all Americans will get the shot. And it's no different, I, I don't know where we got the perception is any different than preventing any other infectious disease. Right, right. You know, we take babies take six shots at a time now yes, yes. and but what has it done it has eradicated diseases that used to kill us polio tuberculosis yes all yes, different types it, uh, of things rotavirus, yes. rotavirus worldwide yes. people died of more dysentery um, yes. probably well I won't try to say how much older I am than you but I used to see H flu meningitis mm -hmm. nobody's gonna see that now because all the kids are immunized, you know, and then there are people that had hepatitis that yes. won't get it now. Right. And, and now we're even uh, preventing uh, sexually transmitted diseases like HPV. HPV, yes. yes. And that's Eventually gonna, cervical cancer yeah, or different exactly, types of cancers. Yes. Exactly. So, you know, I just, I wish people would embrace vaccinations uh, for COVID. Uh, and we probably will have to have boosters um, but we have, we're used to that anyway with the flu shot. Right. Well, with right. all shots, really, right. most of them get boosted. Right. Well, so. needless to say, there is, you know, still a lot of, you know, uh, things that, that we're dealing with, we're reeling with, with the, with this vaccine, uh, with the uh, pandemic overall. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's another something that we just, you know, really have to, I think, trust God about and, and you know, pray that um, he will, you know, reveal the answers that that are there exactly mm -hmm. and uh one of the things as uh you know as i get older and get more mature in my practice uh i want to do more research mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to be conducting a survey to understand why people don't want the shot a lot of times people presume they know the answer mm -hmm. and but they never ask the people mm -hmm. what what is your concern mm -hmm. and there how can i better address it um, by understanding what your concerns are. Right. You know? I think one of the biggest things is to take it on an individual basis. Yes. You know, just everybody has, you know, different uh, life experiences or whatnot. And I think we as African Americans, we have a certain level of, of, of mistrust um, with the medical establishment and just overall. And we can probably talk about that on a whole nother show in and of itself, but I think yes. that's probably one of the things the things that would cause us, you know, as, as a group, you know, in general, just, just to have a little bit more hesitancy. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes um, that mistrust is 
understood. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think of one thing that disturbs me greatly is that in 1983, we learned that black babies died twice as often in the first mm -hmm. year of life than mm -hmm. white babies. As a result of that study, a lot of money has been given to the Office of Minority Health, uh, into initiatives, but you know what? It's now 2021, and still black babies are twice as likely to die in the first year of life. Mm -hmm. So we haven't moved the needle with that at all. We haven't, and that's why I think more of us uh, need to, to express ourselves, to understand, and get more proactive in our own lives because you know that may seem like well it, no that's not a small thing but some people may not understand that but the importance of that in lieu of millions yes. of dollars being spent yeah. offices being developed grants being funded our babies are there still twice still as no likely change. to die yeah. and wow. their mothers are twice as likely to die during pregnancy wow. and um so that's one of the things I hope. Mm -hmm. I think that's where God's leading me next. Wow. Okay. Well, we'll we'll have to talk about that more on one of our other shows. So, so what can we do just overall from a spiritual um, and also mental and physical perspective to improve our health? What are just some, you know, just maybe a couple of things that we can do? Well, first we have to make sure we're uh, getting our medical checkup. Because a lot of people, especially black males, they will avoid it and put it off, you know. So we have to follow um, what is recommended as good health care. Uh, we have to eat um, mostly healthy. <laughs> now, see, we're just coming Ooh. off Fourth of July, and mm -hmm. yesterday we had some Barbecue. ribs. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you know. So, but you know, you have to try to eat better, mm -hmm. get more exercise, mm -hmm. and relax. I think a lot mm -hmm. of people, mm -hmm. you know, we're talking about getting, um, you know, life as a doctor, but life is challenging every day for every everybody. Day. Yes. Even when I was driving in here today, traffic was backed up forever and a storm was coming out by my house. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, thank you, Jesus. I'm still here. Yes. When I get home, yes. my house will still be there. Yes. You know, yes. so we have to try to relax. And exercise your faith. Yes. And have really that sense of, I guess, that sense of calm even in the midst of, of a storm, you know, just overall. Absolutely. Because one of the things that I know, and I think, you, of course, we know, is that stress is going to come. It's how you respond to it. You know, that's really the key. Right. You know, that's really the key in, in terms of handling that stress and not allowing that stress to overtake you. Right. You know, it's how you, you know, basically... Um, handle it. Yeah, exactly. How mm -hmm. you face it. Mm -hmm. uh, do you t face it with fear or do mm -hmm. you face it with, okay, let me understand what's going on here. Because mm -hmm. sometimes it's just a, a matter of understanding. I mean, I did worry, why are all those cars backed up? Where's <laughs> going to be an accident on the way home? Right, right. Then I had to say, okay, get over it. Okay. So on the Healthy Mind, Body, and Spirit show, we not only talk about health, but we like to be about health. And you've alluded to, you know, it in, in your own personal life. But how do you practice health in your own life? And if, if there are any particular uh, Bible verses or scriptures or practices that you put into place that help you um, just live a, a, a spiritual, healthy life, spiritually healthy life? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I represent a disparity. When I first had cancer, what I asked to be done was not done. Mm. And I never would have known that unless, except when I came back a second time, my friend said, you must leave Louisville. Mm. And so I did, and that's where I learned that what I thought I'd had had not happened. So because I have so many <laughs> issues, I seek the best. And I tell everybody that. And if you're talking to your doctor, I mean, we have great doctors here in Louisville. Mm -hmm. I'm not mm -hmm. saying the doctors, I'm, I'd be saying I'm not a great right. doctor. But what I tell people, always ask your physician. Mm -hmm. I hate it when doctors say, well, what do you want to do? Well how, well, how are they going to make the decision? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And so I always tell parents uh, and patients and friends, 
ask them, well, what would you do if it were your mother, if I was your mother or your sister? Because what we do know is that we are treated differently. And unfortunately, we represent probably like 15 or 15 or 16 percent of the population, but only three percent are African American doctors. So the majority of us are taken care of by non-minority physicians. And there have been numerous studies that have shown how people are treated differently based on what they look like, how they talk, Absolutely. how they speak, uh, how they present themselves. And that, that, is the, that is something that really, really bothers me. Mm -hmm. It really bothers me to my core. I wish we could, I always try to read. When something comes up, I want to read. Mm -hmm. But not everybody's going to understand, you know, what's written about, in, especially in health. But always, do, first of all, access health care. Challenge your doctor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you feel comfortable. Get a second opinion. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I travel. I'm going to go uh, to MD Anderson next week. I was spent two weeks there this month, earlier this month. All the way to Texas? Yeah, no, no. I go to the uh, New Jersey campus. Okay, okay. In Camden, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. But it's the same people. Um, and I do that because that makes me feel comfortable. Okay. So basically what you do is you question, you look at the information, uh, or, or you try to research as much as you possibly can to make the best decision for your life. Right. And awesome. find the best people. And... Uh, the majority of us are not taken care of by people who may value them. Okay. Um, they may, may not value us as much as we'd like them to do, right. especially right. our life. Right. And that's why we have so many disparities, why black people are twice as likely almost mm -hmm. on any mm -hmm. front to suffer bad outcomes. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that insight. Thank you so My much, pleasure. Dr. Gaines. My this pleasure. Is, we could talk about this for probably another hour, just overall. But Thank you for joining me on this show with uh, Healthy Mind, Body, and Spirit, specifically talking about faith uh, and spirituality and just religion overall. One last uh, verse of Psalm 27. Wait on the Lord, and he shall renew thy strength. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Yeah. And so that is just some, that's the end of, or a portion of the end of Psalm 27. And, and I think that we can um, say that Regardless of what we go through, regardless of the things that are, we are challenged with in our lives, whether it's in the medical field or, or outside and, and whatnot, that, that we can truly trust him for, Absolutely. You know, for everything. So. And, and, you know, he sent us the Holy Spirit to comfort us mm -hmm. and give us um, that confidence that every day we're going to, it's going to be, it's going to be what God deems it to be. Right, right. And so... The comforter just keeps us comfortable. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. My Thanks pleasure. for joining us on Healthy Mind, Body, and Spirit, where we focus on improving our entire world with an emphasis on the African-American community. It's truth, justice, power. It's TV our way.